Hi, shalom, friends. You know, sometimes I feel a little bit uh, sympathetic towards my non-Jewish neighbors. They're very fine people, and they want to wish me a happy Hanukkah, but they never know when it begins. <laughs> They're not sure if it's in the, the beginning of December, last year was uh, in the middle of December, sometimes at the end of the December, and actually in rare times, it could even be at the end of, of November. I mean, they just can't understand. You know, New Year's in America is always January 1st. You know, Thanksgiving is always the last week of November. Xmas is always the 25th. I mean, why can't the Jews get it straight? <laughs> and then if I get a card, I, I, I really, I feel, I feel terrible for them. They Google, how do you spell Hanukkah? And there are 16 different ways to spell Hanukkah, whether it be C-H or A. If it's two Ks, one K, do you end off with A-H or A? Rabbi Nishalela, master of the universe. <laughs> you give a holiday, they don't even know how to spell it. And then forget about, the, uh, forget about trying to pronounce it. It's at Hanukkah, Chanukkah, etc. But you know something, for Jewish people, it's quite simple, very clear and direct. There's only one way to spell Hanukkah. It's five Hebrew letters, Ches, Nun, Vav, Chaf, and A. And there's only one day of the year which Hanukkah begins, and that's the 25th day of Kislev. And I often think that this, this little bit of living in a secular world where they're not sure about Hanukkah, in contrast to an authentic Jewish perspective, really, to a great extent, reveals the, the tension of the holiday of Hanukkah, which we are celebrating currently. The history should be well known, and I'll just be incredibly concise. Hanukkah, which happened some close to 2,300 years ago, takes place when the Greek Syrian army and the Greek empire controlled Judea or Israel. And the story of Hanukkah takes place when the Jews are being oppressed physically and spiritually. Physically, as Maimonides explains, the Jews had no economic rights and they were taxed exorbitantly. And essentially their possessions belonged to Greek, to Greece. Um, we won't even talk about this, but the Jewish women were very vulnerable. They were violated, they were humiliated and the Jews could do very little about that. And finally, even in terms of political rights, you could only be a citizen of Athens, which gave you a certain standing in terms of your rights and privileges, only if you basically uh, accepted the Greek philosophy of life. So physically, they were oppressed. It was not an easy time for traditional Jews. Spiritually, it was much more severe. Though the Holy Temple was standing, it was defiled. Every person knows that the Jewish tradition is to worship a God who is infinite and beyond description, and hence to put God in the figure of a f or a form is idolatry, it's forbidden. Well, the Greeks allowed for the temple to stand, but they brought in statues and they brought in the gods of Zeus and Hercules, and which are essentially glorified human deities made by man, and its human qualities magnified on steroids. And they brought that into the Holy Temple. We all know that the Jewish people have dietary laws. One of the well-known laws is that the Jewish people do not eat the pig and they certainly would not offer it to the Almighty God, and the Greeks did so. So they ripped the heart and the soul of the Jewish people by allowing a caricature of their temple. The, the walls stood, but there was no spirit. And then what happened was that there was a revolt by some pure Jewish, uh, led by Jews who led a pure traditional life, and after severe wars and much, much heroism and courage. God made a miracle. They were able to retake the, the temple. They cleansed it. They wanted to light the golden menorah. They needed special oil. God made a miracle. They found that special oil and that special oil, though it was not enough to burn 
for the entire duration they needed to make new oil. God made the miracle, and for eight days the oil was lit, and we celebrate that with Hanukkah today. There's a touch of Hanukkah which incorporates past, present, and future. Let me explain. You know, if you're a European and you're learning in France, you're learning about the history of France, you, much emphasis is put, Fra France had an empire and its culture spread throughout Europe and beyond. If you're in England, you learned about the sun never set on the British Empire. If you're from Spain, you read about how, the, how Spain was in the New World. If you're from Belgium, we read about empires. Today, they're countries, mostly democratic, struggling like all countries, working in unison with other countries, European Union, no more empires. And we could go into Japan and, and the Asia, but you get the point. So imagine a country that's rooted in the past. We were once great. It's depressing at, uh, at best. It actually holds back growth because the world today will never tolerate that supposed greatness of the past. And then there are countries that perhaps dream of the future, domination. I don't know if this is a correct analogy, but look at North Korea. It wants to take over South Korea. It has brazen enough to threaten Japan, etc. What about their people today who are literally starving? No, they're dreaming of the future. In fact, some would say that the present uh, war between Ukraine and, and Russia has a touch of that. We want to be great again expand our, but what about now? See, the present is actually a bridge between the past and the present. L let, let's perhaps bring this down to a person. There was a person who was once great. Maybe he was a football star in college. Maybe he was once a high-powered attorney. Maybe he was once happily married. He lives in the past because now he's derelict. And the only reason why he gets out of bed is because he reminds himself that once he was great. Again, not much of a recipe for a vibrant life. And there are those who foolishly live as if it's going to be in the future. So the college grad that just got his uh, BA or even an MA in business administration if he's dreaming about that he'll be the next tycoon on Wall Street or the next CEO of a multi-billion, he'll never make it because you cannot become great without the present and the present is passed on the, based on the future, on the, on the present is based on, on what preceded you. So there was a time when we were carried, then we began to crawl and then we began to walk and only then were we able to run. So now let's bring this down to our tradition, Hanukkah. We light the candle and we say, Blessed are you, God, Master of the universe, who made miracles to our fathers in the past at this time, by Yom Emohim, in those days, Bisman Hazah, now. What are we doing? We're reminding ourselves of a miracle that happened 2,300 years ago, and we dream and anticipate that one day we'll get back, the temple will be the third temple, and we will light the golden menorah, just as they did it 2,300 years ago. But it's not a dream. We are lighting the candles now. Because by lighting the candles now, we are actually preparing for the future. You see, even when we think about, for example, Passover, We'll start with, we were slaves, and God took us out. The end of the Passover Seder is by next year in Jerusalem. How are we going to get there? By doing the Seder now, by eating the masa and drinking the wine, and telling the story of the past, we're actually preparing 
presently creating the future. This is a remarkable, remarkable, extraordinary gift that God gave the Jewish people. Not to forget the past, not to, not to hold back from anticipating and imagining the future, but the present to fashion the future by taking the past. And that's my message that I'd like to share with you today. Happy Hanukkah. It's the past. We are preparing for the future. And let's make the present count. It is a time of miracles. It is a time of rededication. It's a time of joy. And most of all, it's a time for us to say, God, we are ready. We've prepared. Please show us that glorious future that you promised us. Thank you.